Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm your host, Tony Coleman. Today I'm going to show you how to install Boink, the Berkeley Open Infrastructure for Network Computing, on Ubuntu. When you're fully logged into Ubuntu, just go to the Ubuntu Software Repository, click on the search option, type in Boink. Select it, click install. It'll want to know your password. And now it is installing. This is probably the easiest way of installing it on Ubuntu, using the repository version. However, doing this means you are most likely have an older version of the Boink software. For most people, this is sufficient. Okay, so it's installed. We can now launch the application, either from here or should be in your applications list. When it first launches, it's in the simple view, and it will try to attach to a project. I will select World Community Grid, hit next. Agree to their terms, next. If you don't already have an account, you can set one up here. I don't recommend doing it this way. I recommend going to their website. If you go to https colon two forward slashes join dot world community grid dot org question mark recruiter ID equals three three eight five four two the and symbol team ID equals B P five X in J B R nine N one. That is case sensitive as well. So double check that as you type it in. Since I already have an account, I choose existing. And now the project is added. Hit finish. And you can see the project here. Now most people prefer the advanced view. So you go up here to view. Advanced view. Notices will start appearing once the project has synchronized. No projects currently only attached to World Community Grid. Tasks will appear here as soon as all the files have downloaded. You can see some other stats and disk space usage. However, what I normally do once I get to this point is I configure my preferences. Here you can change how many CPU cores or threads you use uh, through a percentage base. Uh, to use that most CPU time is if you don't want the work units to run 100% of the time, you can actually designate something like 90%, which would mean it would run nine seconds, then pause for one second, and then run for nine more seconds. Uh, this is good for if you have, say, a laptop that likes to overheat. This helps keep the temperature down a little bit. It does cause problems at some projects because some work units don't like being interrupted and if you have it constantly pausing, it may cause it to error out. So test your system, see what works best for you and uh, go from there. These options here are for when to suspend the c computer. For example, if you have a laptop or the battery and you're not plugged into the wall, you may want the processor to not be contributing as it would use more electricity and therefore run your battery down quicker. You can suspend when the computer is in use. That means anytime the mouse or keyboard is active, it will pause. Or you can just have a suspend your graphics processing um, if you are using an, your video card as a coprocessor. And that way your CPU can continue working on the CPU work units. Um, you can also put a delay on how long that the computer needs to be idle before processing continues. And then you can also 
suspend when non-boink CPU usage is above a certain percentage. I normally set that as 85% because it makes it a lot easier to reconfigure things if your computer becomes too sluggish. The bottom portion here is for how much cache you want to use for storing additional work units. Uh, typically, Boink will have these default settings. Some people will run this at all zeros because they want to download new fresh work units as soon as the old ones have completed, but some projects have an incentive <clears throat> for being the first person to return it. So if you have a large cache, you have a less likelihood of being the first person returning certain work units. There is a network tab. This is used for limiting download speeds and upload speeds or a certain amount of data each day. It's usually best for if you have a tiered data or a very slow connection. Disk and memory. This is where you can allocate how much hard drive space Point can use for storing all the various Point files for all the projects. And the memory settings based on how you want them to operate. I recommend putting leave non-GPU tasks in memory while suspended because if you don't and the client suspends itself, you will most likely lose all of the processing you've done since the last checkpoint. By leaving it in memory, it'll just basically pause it and will continue where it left off as soon as the computer starts blank up again. There's one more tab here for daily schedules. This is where if you needed to limit the network connectivity to the Boink client to just certain times of the day or certain days of the week. You can do that. This is really good for people who have satellite connections and don't have a completely unlimited data plan. Uh, this way if they had certain times of the day where it was completely unlimited, they could set it up Boink to only transfer files during those time frames. So when we're done making our choices, we hit save. As you can see, it's running two work units uh, from World Community Grid right now. It's because I gave this virtual machine two CPU threads, so it's acting like it's a dual core computer. World Community Grid does not have multi-threading on their application, so each app will use a specific thread. I wanted to also show you how to attach an account manager. Account managers are great if you support a lot of projects or want to control a lot of computers remotely. Uh, you can change different settings and when the clients check back in with the account manager, they will pick them up. So in this case, it's just like adding a project, only now you see a few different options. I use BAM, it's provided by boinkstats.com, BAM just stands for a Boink Account Manager. Hit next. It wants the username. and the username is case sensitive and is not the email address itself. Hit finish. And since I have mine set up to automatically attach multiple projects, you'll see a few more attaching here. And you should start seeing a few extra work units also download. There's one for Goofy. And it's that simple. If you have any questions on how to set this up or how to configure each project or to configure your client for specific projects, feel free to get a hold of us in our distributed computing forums. I am a member of Hard OCP. You can find us at https colon two forward slashes hardforum.com forward slash forums forward slash distributed dash computing period three two forward slash. I want to thank you for watching my video and if you enjoyed it or found it to be helpful, please click subscribe and share the video. It costs nothing to do but helps content providers like myself a great deal. Until next time, have a good day.